Hello and welcome back to Tutoring with Gavin. In this series of videos I'll be showing how to get great grades in your exam using quality quotes or speeches from the play Macbeth by William Shakespeare. I will show you how to reveal vital information about character, themes, imagery and dramatic techniques. This video will be looking at Banquo's soliloquy in Act 3, Scene 1, Lines 1 to 10, after Macbeth has been crowned king. Thou hast it now. King, Carter, Gloms, all has the weird woman promised. And I fear thou hast placed most foully for it. And yet, it was said it should not stand in thy posterity, but that myself should be root and father of many kings. If truth come from them, as upon thee, Macbeth, their speeches shine. Why, by the promises on thee made good, may they not be my oracles as well and set me up in hope? Hmm. But hush. No more. The speech starts with a direct address to Macbeth. Thou hast it now, King, Cordor, Glams, all as the weird women promised, and I fear thou placed most foully for it. Shakespeare is making it clear that Banquo knows that Macbeth is guilty, having plotted foully for it. The alliteration of weird women and foully for it draw attention to this collaboration between the witches and Macbeth. The next lines are ambiguous because they could be taken two ways. Yet it was said it should not stand in thy posterity, but that myself should be the root and father of many kings. Is Banquo just showing his relief that Macbeth's children will never be crowned? Or is he thinking about his own legacy as the father of many kings? It could be argued that Banquo's lack of action in Act 2 is because it suited him perfectly to let Macbeth become king, so that his own prophecy would come true. However, this speech could simply be Shakespeare's way of reminding the audience that Macbeth still has to deal with the issue of future kings, and therefore creates foreshadowing and dramatic tension. These early performances of Macbeth would have been performed for the royal court, and so it could also be Shakespeare trying to please King James, reminding everyone in the audience that he was the rightful heir and his ancestors could be traced back to Banquo. The second half of this speech seems to suggest that Banquo is optimistic, as the witches' prophecies have come true. The sibilance of their speeches shine could suggest that he is sly, because he has not told anyone else of Macbeth's crimes, and now wants the witches to be his oracles. Traditionally, Banquo is considered the good guy who falls victim to Macbeth's ruthless ambition. But it is possible to consider him as ambitious for his own family. This would explain why he does nothing to prevent Duncan's murder, despite his suspicions, and allows Macbeth to be crowned, even though circumstantial evidence against his friend is overwhelming. One other possible reason for this short soliloquy is that Shakespeare wants us to understand Macbeth's motivation for killing Banquo. Banquo is the only other witness to the witch's prophecy, and Macbeth considers him a threat on two fronts getting away with murder, and Banquo's children becoming kings instead of Macbeth's. Well, I hope this has helped you to understand this important moment in the play. If you want notification of other quality quotes that will help you get a great grade, then please subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. Until next time.